Hey guys, I'm Lucy Walker and we're going to take a look at the wonderful world of stone setting. We're going to start with flush setting today, which is a great place to start as so many other settings are based on this. Now there's many ways to do this, but ho hum, you sign up to my classes, so I'm going to show you my favorite way. And of course, I'm going to show you a couple of variations for good measure. Now we're going to need a few tools for this, so let's have a look at what they are. To start with, you'll want to have a decent pair of digital calipers. If you can afford them, this brand, which I cannot pronounce, is an amazing brand. I've had these for 10 years and they're still going strong. They're Japanese and uh, yeah, they really are worth the money. You're also going to need some form of magnification. If you can't see what you're doing, you're definitely not going to be doing a good job. So I allow either use an optivisor with a number five lens, or I personally love these Abrera glasses, but at 500 pounds a pop, sorry, 500 US dollars a pop, they're pretty expensive, but you can grab these from Otto Fry if you really want a pair. Again, I've had these for about 12 years and I absolutely love them. We're gonna need some tweezers, and we're also gonna need a loop. Now, we're not going to be working through the loop, but the loop is a much more powerful magnification than our optivisors or our glasses, so we'll be using this to check our work as we go. We're also going to need some lubrication and some way to hold your work while we're setting it. I'm using a micro ball vise from GRS. You don't necessarily have to have this. You can happily do flush setting directly on your desk, but I do recommend using thermoplastic with this. It's a fantastic tool. Not only does it hold your work securely, but it also dampens vibrations so you won't get that nasty chatter and you're like, what's chatter? Don't worry, you're gonna find out very, very soon. Um, we'll show you how to use the thermoplastic in the resources section, so don't worry at all there. You're also going to need a pendant motor or flex shaft. Now these are exactly the same things, it's just they're known by different names in different parts of the world, or you can also use a micro motor. Micro motors are slightly different from flex shafts in that the motor is actually in the handpiece itself. And finally, we're going to need some handmade tools. You can check out the resources section to see how to make these. But here we've got two needle burnishers in different sizes. I have a smaller one and a larger one. As my stones get larger or smaller, I'll use the right needle burnisher for the job at hand. We're also going to need a brass pusher. And finally, a parallel sided burnisher. All righty. Let's do this. For this project, we're going to be setting round brilliant cut stones from two millimeters to four millimeters in size. We can set larger stones and we can also set fancy shaped stones in the flush setting style. However, it's a little more of an advanced technique, so we'll save that for another class. But before we start setting, we need to understand a little bit about the anatomy of the stone itself. So let's go from top to bottom. The largest facet on a brilliant cut is the table facet, which is this one right here. The rim going around the edge of the stone is called the girdle. And this is a very important part because we'll need to measure this later. The very tip at the bottom is called the culet or culé, depending on where in the world you're from. The whole of the top part of the stone above the girdle is known as the crown and everything below the girdle is known as the pavilion. Okay, so let's just recap that. Here we've got the table, the girdle, and the culets. The area above the girdle is the crown, and the area below the girdle is the pavilion. We're gonna be using 18 gauge metal for this project, which is one millimeter thick. If you're new to this, I definitely wouldn't recommend using any metal that's thinner than 18 gauge, but as you get more experience, you can definitely use thinner metal as long as there's enough room to cut a seat for your stone in it. And that will make a lot more sense in a minute. 